So this is the first video of 2022. I want to thank all of you who stuck around for 2021. I've took some time off to spend with family and friends and I hope all of you had an amazing holiday period as well. Now the formalities are out of the way, let's have a look at rudder pedals. Now it doesn't matter if you're taxiing to the runway, if you're taking off from the runway or if you're making a control turn after the runway, there is one component that we need for all of these actions and those are the rudder pedals. Like I started out with an Xbox controller and I was very satisfied at first, but the moment I've got my Thrustmaster set, like the cheap ones, not the really expensive ones, it really changes the immersion, the, the, the way the, hand, the plane handles in the game, it makes everything a lot easier, you can do more advanced maneuvers. Now, flight simming has been going on for decades and people have created their own rudder pedals, they've created their own cockpits and some even use sheet metal, milling, CNCing, whatever. So I can't really compete with that and that's fine with me because what I'm going to be competing with is this. I've created a miniature rudder set that will show you everything you need to know to create your own proper rudder pedals with the logic based on this mini version. Now the construction is rather simple. Now I've 3D printed mine and the files in the description, but you can make this out of almost any material, PVC pipe, wood, iron, uh, whatever you have at your hands. It's just that I live in a small apartment building, so A, I've got neighbors and B, uh, I've got a wife that would really murder me if I would use a saw in here all day long. So 3D printing it is for me, but what I basically need is a base. I need two bars that can hold my rudder pedals on it and it have two evenly sized holes in it, a potentiometer, two iron crossbars with a diameter of 2.5 millimeters and a width of around 3.5 centimeters or 35 millimeters, some connection parts so we can connect everything together and that's it. Since this project isn't gonna be really tough on any microcontroller, you can get an Arduino Uno, Mega, whatever you have laying around. Now the first thing that we're gonna start out with is connect the potentiometer to the base. For this we just stick it through the hole and make uh, fasten it with the, the nut that comes with it. Now the connector also has a hole that runs horizontally through it. It's around the same size of the bar and that is where we stick our crossbar through. We add to spaces to make sure that it doesn't shift from left to right. And then we put on the end connectors either to the left and the right side. So now we've got our lower bar connected to the potentiometer directly. This leaves us with our second crossbar where we just put on the end caps as well. And we can just place it on top of our little base. What makes this work is the fact that the pedals can move freely from the crossbars. Like that is why it's round, it can turn and twist. Because we don't tighten the pedals to the crossbars, it has a free range of motion on, on a rotary scale, so that if we push it forward, the crossbar has the possibility to twist in place, making the potential motor turn. Now on my website, I'll also go into this into more depth, so go check out the article that I put in the description. Now to clearly illustrate how to wire this up, I've loaded up fritzing. So I go with a Uno and a potentiometer. Now, potentiometer is an analog device, a component, sorry. Well, to clearly illustrate what an analog component is, so an analog, it creates an analog signal, is to first illustrate what a digital signal is. A digital signal returns ones and zeros. So open, closed, on, off, um, one, zero. And that's the only thing it can send. So if you press the button, it sends a one, for instance. If you release the button, it sends a zero, so no connection, or the other way around, it depends on your circuit. Um, but that's basically a digital signal. Now an analog signal is something that can fluctuate. It can be fully open, it can be fully closed, it can be something in between, it can be halfway, and we can like pinpoint the value it's at, like the current that's running through it or the power that runs through it, and then determine how far it's open, how far it's closed, um, etc. This can also be used as a volume control, brightness control for an LED, um, whatever you want to use it for but that's more of an analog signal. Like this is really explained on a basic level. And now I promise you that in a future video, I will use a Hall Effect sensor because I've been using potential motors way too often. It's just that it's easy to get started with and it's easy to explain for people that are just tuning in and are like, I've never done this before. 
Go with a potential meter, it's really simple, really easy, and then work your way up to a Hall Effect Sensor. Now we have three connections that we need to make with a potentiometer. We have a ground connection, a 5 volts connection or 3.3 volts, depends on what kind of board you're using. And we need to connect it to an analog pin, in this case to our Arduino. If you use something else, it has an analog pin as well, probably. Now, how to recognize the analog pins? Really simple, A0, A1, analog 1, analog 2, analog 3, analog 4 or 5. If it doesn't have the A in front of it, it's probably not an analog pin. Now, other boards may use other rec recognizable labeling, but the Arduino uses an A1, A0. You could use any analog port that you like, A1, A2, 3, 4, 5, it doesn't matter, as long as you change it in the code to the pin that you've connected it to, and I'm gonna show you how in a second. Like, if you're just getting started with coding, or you're still struggling with the basics, don't worry, this is a great starter project because we almost don't need any code at all. If you've never used my library before, or my connector, which connects to the game, and um, let's just talk about our hardware. You need to go to bitsandroids.com slash downloads. I put a link in the description as well. And there you find um, the connector and our library. Library. First download the connector, extract the zip file. Then you download the library. So here we go, you just say downloads. It downloads the bitsandroids library. You open your Arduino IDE. You go to sketch. You go to include library, add.zip library and you select the bits and droids library. And that's it, that's all you have to do. It will include it into the code. What is a library? A library enables you to use the code that I've written in the past to make your life easier. In coding, you usually don't want to reinvent the wheel over and over. So a library, you can store a piece of code in and then people can use it over and over again. And not just me, I can share it with you like I just did. Then you can use that piece of code and you're like, oh, that's really handy. I'll add something to the library. People can use that as well. So it gives you a, a library of code that other people can use over and over again. So we've downloaded a connector, we installed it, and now we say we want to include the code that is in here. And then we say bits and droids flight connector, and we give it a name. So I'm going to say connector is bits and droids flight connector. No, brackets. Now the Bitsandroids and flight connector can be seen like um, a blueprint. It contains variables, it contains functions that it can execute, it contains functions of data it can retrieve, uh, send back, forward, etc. But it, it isn't really an object until we initiate it. And that is what we're doing here. We're saying the bits and Rods flight connector blueprint, quote unquote. We give that object a name, so we say connector. So now we're starting to form a real physical object from that blueprint. And we say it's of the type bits and droids flight connector. So now we take the blueprint and we take all the code that's available in there and the functions it can use and the variables and we give it a name and we give it a physical appearance. It's not really a physical appearance, but we'll see in a second how we can use this in our code. Now, serial.begin, 115200. Serial is a way to communicate over USB with our computer. You can use it not just to communicate over USB, you can also use it to communicate. Now the 115200 is the baud rate. Baud rate may sound uh, technical, but it's basically just the rate at which it reads data. Now, it sends data at that rate, but our connector also reads data at that rate, so it's very important that these two values match with the connector. Now, imagine that the data comes flowing in quite rapidly, and we start reading it at a certain set interval because that's what's happening if that doesn't match we're gonna be either be losing data or the other way around if the data comes flowing in slower than that we are reading the data there is a chance that we duplicate data and overall that doesn't <laughs> mean that we read data twice so we get uh, let's say if we send a b c d it doesn't mean that we send a b b c c d d whatever it means that because it's all constructed out of ones and zeros that we get a part one and zero here it can construct it with some bits and zeros ones here and then we create something really new that uh, can really mess up our day so we don't want that we want those values to match now was it the most important part about the code probably not but at least now you know how it works and functions so up here we've created a connector object from the blueprint and now we're going to do something with that object we say object we want to send set rudder pot 
a zero because that is where we've connected it if you remember um let's see here we go we've connected to five volts ground and a zero um and that's it <laughs> that's all there is to it now on my website i also do a deep dive into how the connector handles this and how it gets smoothed out now okay we got it loaded up to a board we already have everything connected so we look at the serial monitor and we can clearly see that something is happening if we move it we can see that the values are changing with prefix so 901 is the prefix this basically tells the connector i'm receiving data id 901 and then the connector knows oh 901 that's the rudder and then it has a value so it knows okay so i received our rudder value and this value i need to map to the in-game rudder axis so if you fully extend the right rudder we can see 503 fully extend 434 and in neutral position we have well 476 something like that so this already tells us that the left range is shorter than the right range and if i would you know move the potentiometer emit those values will change and by moving it and let's see what now the neutral value is now neutral value is 410 now we could agree that we're gonna mount it in such a way that the neutral position will always be 410 and then i'm gonna say to you good luck uh, calibrate it in such a way that the physical middle is also 410 on the potentiometer and then we'll continue uh, with the rest of the video but in reality that doesn't work if you tighten it a little bit more than me if you created a bigger construction than mine which i'd highly recommend um you'd end up with different neutral values with bigger ranges with smaller ranges so that is something that we need to work out how you can make sure that the middle value of your physical device matches the middle neutral position of the in-game rudder really simple and i'm going to show you how we've got settings and calibrate axes there's a little bug in here that i need to fix but that's not really that hard to do but let's put the potentiometer in a neutral value a position sorry or the rudder pedals not the potentiometer per se here we go it's going to be 407 so what i'm going to do is say 407 neutral then i'm going to move the left pedal fully open 371 here we go and i'm going to fix that curve in a second and we're going to move the right pedal fully open which is going to be 433 so what do we have we have kind of a even distributed range so that's fine so i'm going to fix this by moving this a little bit and moving this it's a little bit of not the behavior that i expected um we've got to work out the quirks a little bit now if you're putting your feet down what usually happens is that there's a little bit of wiggle room at the neutral position especially if your construction isn't as sturdy like the Thrustmaster even has it's like a cheap Thrustmaster rudder pedals they have this little wiggle in neutral position now there are two things that you could do you could either send those values either way so just the little wiggle that you put down translate it in game and show me that on the in-game rudder pedals or perhaps even better you could create a little dead zone around that neutral area where if the values are in between those wiggle areas we don't want to send anything it does send it but then the game will be like okay i'm not going to do anything with this so i'm just going to leave it in neutral now, how bigger a wiggle room is how bigger a dead zone needs to be so if you have a really big area where there is a lot of wiggle room we'd increase the dead zone but if you get something ridiculous like this uh, there's probably something wrong with your design <laughs> but this also means that we can almost fully extend it before anything even happens in game now because we've got a quite a small range of only 4371 to 423 which usually you have something like 0 to 1023 so that's uh, three times 20 times the bigger range than this on your potentiometer but because we've went with a really miniature version um, it's a little bit more uh, sensitive on this part now the further we increase the sensitivity plus the further we need to press the pedal to travel this distance this means that the first part will be really sensitive and only if we push in that last part we see that there, there is a little rise in how sensitive it will get so it will push it in that last bit so this way we can create a sensitive first part so you can you know play around on the runway try to get that center line 
and then only if we fully extend it for some reason, it gets fully extended as well, but on a more of a steeper slope. You could make it really extreme that, <laughs> that we have a quick drop and then we do some sensitivity adjustments, but I think in most cases you will be using something either with a straight line, so it's a one-on-one -on -one translation, or something where the first part is more sensitive and precise, and then the last part is more of a boost in movement. You can reverse it if you have the left pedal on the left pedal, or the right pedal on the right pedal, etc. And then you can just hit save. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hit save, why not? Well, that's awkward. But it did save it, I know that for sure. Right? Yeah, it did save it. Um, I need to check into that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so our axes are calibrated. So the last thing that we need to do is just um, start a connector and... Oh, yeah, always make sure to disable the serial monitor. It explains a lot. I got the art, you know, of course. So make sure to select the proper. But we can clearly see that even though... Yeah, I started moving it around already. Here we go. And it's a really finicky physical design that I've made, but it shows you how easy it is to code it, how easy it is to wire up the components, and you already have, well, it, it has some design flaws, but it works in, in basic principles. Here we go. So the range isn't really fully optimized, I believe. Uh, this, this is neutral. Yeah, you are well. I need to move the entire contraption. Here we go. So it works better than I expect. Now, okay, this physical design isn't at least a lot to be desired. Okay, so I moved the potential with her fully out of her range. We could recalibrate it, but I think we'll get the point that we're trying to make. We've created rudder pedals from scratch in, in like no time, no coding. Explaining the serial rate and how the data gets read was like the longest part of this video, so that illustrates how easy it is. Now, this construction has some flaws, obviously, so uh, I wouldn't recommend to really replace your rudder pedals with something like this, but it shows you how easy it is to get started. Like, if you're sitting on your couch and you're like, I don't want to spend 500 euros or dollars on a proper rudder set, and you're like, I got an idea, but I don't know how to code. So I hope that the video showed you that the simplest part is actually quite coding and setting it up and calibrating it and making it interface with the game. Which, to me, when I started out, that seemed like the hardest part, but in reality, um, it's actually quite simple. So yeah, um, if you go out and create your own rudder set, perhaps not this small version, but a proper one, let me know in the comments. I'd love to see the results. Uh, Share them in our Discord server. I'll put a link in the description as well. I'd like to thank all of you who stuck around with me 2021, and I hope you can have a blast in 2022 as well. A special thank you to all the Patreon supporters that make this video and all the others possible. And I most importantly hope to see you in the next one. Yeah. Miniature rudder pedals. Yeah. It works. <laughs> Doesn't make sense.